So now we're going to talk briefly about the Cobb Douglas production function, which actually is not really any super important function. You could go your whole life totally fine without ever having heard about it, unless you're an economist, in which case you probably care because some guy won a Nobel, well, actually two guys apparently, won a Nobel Prize for, for this function. But but besides that, it's, it's not important. So um, the Cobb Douglas function uh, relates uh, the production of an economy. So this is from macroeconomics. So production and production here is understood as the, the monetary uh, value of goods produced in a year in the economy. And, um, and it expresses it as a function of labor and capital. And so labor is understood as the number of uh, person hours worked in a year so this is you know if you have like uh maybe 30 employees times 250 working days a year times eight hours a day that kind of computation and then there's going to be uh capital and so capital is understood as the monetary value of uh, facilities and equipment material resources Okay, and so the the actual function itself says that production as a function of labor and capital is expressed as um, B times L to the one minus alpha K to the oops L to the alpha K to the one minus alpha for some parameters or constants and maybe I should emphasize fixed constants uh, that are chosen to fit the data. For the uh, data that Cobb and Douglas looked at, they used 1.01, um, whoops, 1.01 for B, and alpha was uh, 3 quarters. Um, so that's neither here nor there. So why am I showing you this function? Well, for a couple of reasons. One, I just wanted to show you it's an example of something where you can check out the um, the domain. And so the um, domain of, of this function is going to be, well, uh, it actually only makes sense. Oh, and, and I, should, I should have mentioned here that um, B is going to be positive, and also A is going, or sorry, alpha is going to be between uh, zero and one. And then as a consequence, um, it only makes sense to consider where L is uh, non-negative and K is non-negative, because if you have no labor and no capital, then you're definitely not going to have any production. And it doesn't even make sense to talk about like negative labor or something. I guess you could talk about negative capital maybe if you're in debt, but ah, I don't want to get into the weeds there. Um, okay, and so then there's, there's also the idea of range. What does the range look like? Well, okay, so can we figure out what this function looks like? If this is the L axis and this is the K axis and P is on the vertical here, then um, for a fixed value of, of K, L is going to look like some kind of square root looking graph. And the further you go out, so this is supposed to be over this line, this one's supposed to be over this line. So I'm sketching traces here. Um, the further I go out on, on the K axis here, the more sort of rapidly that, that curve is opening up. So that looks like a total mess. I hate it. Um, maybe it'll look better if I look at a trace uh, where I fix a value of L. And the answer is no, not really. It, it, that also looks like crap. Um, okay, so now I'm going to ask a computer to uh, plot it for me. And before I do that, I'm, I'm going to rotate the, the axes around so that I have um, L going in this direction and K going in this direction. This is a tough one to draw at the best of times, but the uh, perspective that I chose there at the beginning is the worst possible. So I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to spin this, this puppy around here. Bam! There we go. Okay, so much nicer. So, so again, this is, this is the L axis here, and this is the uh, 
k-axis here and we've got p coming up on on the vertical there so there it is in all its glory that's the cobb douglas production function um, and the other thing that's neat about it that we'll see in a, in a forthcoming video is that it gives a very slick little example of how we can take just a couple of ideas write them down as in terms of partial derivatives and then use that to actually produce this formula so we can cough it up from from scratch basically with just a couple minor assumptions so we'll, we'll do that in a, in a forthcoming episode